Welcome back to the channel. Hey guys, welcome back. I am so excited about today's tea. We have an amazing 2003 Iwu Gushu Shempuar. Oh boy, I cannot wait to crack that open. Yes, we're both very thrilled about uh, retasting this tea. Mm -hmm. However, if you're new to the channel, hello, I'm Jen. Oh right, I should introduce myself, and I'm Phil. Yes, this channel is all about Chinese tea and its culture. We do videos on tastings, uh, how to brew teas, and some vlog in Chinese tea farm. That's right. So give that subscribe button a click and be sure to click the notify bell too so you'll know whenever we post a new video or go live. Before we dive into the tasting, let's have a look at the dry leaves. Mm. Oh wow. So look at the uh, first thing I notice is just the size of the, some of these leaves are really whole and mm. intact. Um, I'm kind of tooting my own horn. I did a good job breaking them off of the cake. <laughs> <laughs> but the color is really beautiful too. Uh, deep brown. Yeah. Those, and those are uh, Gu Shu, which means ancient trees. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, Yi Wu is the origin, the location where the tea is from. It's one of mm. the prime locations and from the, uh, the ancient six most famous tea mountains. Yeah, super excited to drink it. I really love, there's some um, deep brown. There's also some, a little bit of lighter brown. I really love the color and the luster of the leaf. It's got a really silky texture, the dry leaf as well. Yeah, the whole color realm has uh, changed from the raw mm -hmm. puar, the shen puar, the more to the green tinge to the mm. uh, brown to the red tinge is uh, transforming. Mm. As usual, I'm gonna warm up the teapot. Oh, I'm, it's been a while since we tasted this tea. It's, it's obviously not something we pull out every second day or it's not our breakfast tea. Um, but as Jen mentioned earlier, this is a retasting. We always taste it for the uh, website, of course, and I'm really excited to see how it has um, matured and aged over time. It's one of the really fun things about an aged tea is to just see it develop and grow. It's a really big leaf. I was a little nervous when I broke them off. I, I worked really hard to keep them intact and nice and large. Right, and right. I knew it would be a bit challenging to fit. And you see like this one really doesn't fit. If you ever encounter that. Stem comes <laughs> off. It, it just to break that. Right. It's a cake. It's going to happen no matter what, right? It's not the best thing to do, but certain times you just have to do. It's got to fit into the teapot. And you can see this is a pretty large teapot too with yeah. a wide open mouth. There was no... It's really a plum. I already smell that. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my God. This is good. This is good. Oh, you're not kidding. Wow, so plummy. And it has that beautiful smokiness that I like. You're right. Smokiness, plummy with a hint of hay. Yeah. Not, hay might not be right. It, it's quite interesting because oh. poor actually not, some poor maybe has a little bit more firing flavor when they're young, but when they're older, they could go away. Mm. This one was when they're young, it's very clean. It doesn't have the uh, fire, firing right. aroma, but now it comes out in that really woody, like almost like um, when Woody. you're going through a neighborhood where people have a wood fire, a yes. hint of that in the yes. distance. Yes, but it's really balanced and beautiful. It's not uh, burned. Mm. It's not uh, the, sometimes even the wood fire could have a little right. bit more uh, sharpness in the smell. This is not that kind. Mm. I really feel like this is coming more from the, the leaf or something than it's coming from sort of smoke on the it leaf. It comes you from know? the it leaf. It is from yes, the leaf. That's mm. right. That's why it, initially it didn't have much of the right. smokeness and now it's coming out. Mm. See that liquor color. And if you brew tea often and drink tea, when you hear how the, the sound of a liquor uh, pouring out the liquor, mm. you kind of know the liquor texture a little bit. Right. It's I a, want to talk about that a bit because right. it's so interesting because when you first explained those things mm -hmm. to me, I was like, what? And sort of similar to the pour, when you pour mm -hmm. this tea, you can also start and see that thickness. 
I couldn't believe that at first when I was getting into tea, but I'm starting to have brewed tea enough on my own. I'm starting to notice those really, I'll call them really subtle details, but right. But they're there. And this is the uh, oh. liquor color. You even have a little bit of that bite on the nose, a little bit of that um, brisk clarity mm. combined in with all of those other um, profiles we were explaining, the woodiness, the subtle smoke. Even on the liquor aroma, a little hint, a little hint of, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to say something a little weird, a little hint of smoked oyster. Oh, right. Just a, I don't want to make you guys feel like this tea is fishy. Um, the aroma is not fishy, but it has that, maybe because it's the sien and the smoke, the, the brothiness in the smoke. The... Mm. Mm. the room's gonna go quiet for a minute here folks this is so good we just gotta process this it's hard to come out with some words mm. the first thing that hits you is actually the feeling of the tea I was about to say that when I smell the uh, the leaves, it really reminds me. That's the smell of Yunnan, the jungle, the mm. the wildness with that kind of a touch of, a, you know, the human warmth. Because it's mm. not a fully like a wild. There mm. are those Aboriginal peoples there. That mm -hmm. kind of a, it's very um, exotic. Exotic. Tropical exotic. Mm -hmm. Yes, when you say exotic, it even reminds me of the temples and stuff we visited when we were there, the bright colors, this, the sort of scary looking mm. um, figures on the, on the paintings and the walls, like that kind of, plus the wild, lush jungle full of, for me, full of green things that I've never seen in my life. Right, and right. And then the villages full of these vibrant people. And I just love this. This, uh, in, China, in China, in my hometown, we have a we smoke. We smoke date, a big date. We smoke that as a black. Then we cook it like mm. into a soup, kind of a, like a dessert soup. It's sweet, mm. and uh, this really reminds of uh, reminds me of that because it has a, a dry, dry date element with the smoke. The smoke is not. Mm. Like it's not on the surface, like a wrap around the liquor mm. is in the liquor. Mm. So when you, s I mean, when I smell it, it has a really light smokiness. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, like uh, really prominent or very, mm. uh, you know, uh, attacking me. That's right. But when I drink it, it's a subtle, uh, just a perfect level of smokiness that make me feel warming and mm. comfort but not like uh, um, right. beside a campfire. Yeah, I feel like another another person might not even point it out as smokiness. They might describe it as rustic, um, almost like log cabin. It might bring back memories mm. like that, like more that that um, hint of something that was there. Yes. Mm. Oh, the thickness is really astonishing. Mm. It just feels as a smooth, you know, slippery mm. smooth. That mm. I almost felt like I don't have to consciously swallow it. It just to slide down the throat really easily and um, mm. it's a gracefully sensation. almost. It's kind of like a sensation, mm. a texture. Right. When I taste it properly and breathe over the liquor, while the liquor's in my mouth, the plum really pops, that datey plum note that you were describing. Mm. It really... Um, and again, not a sweet, not a sweet plum or a sweet date. It's got the, the vestiges of sweetness, but it's more uh, that aroma, the essence of the plum or the date. It's really hard to describe. And there's a lot of that gentle sweetness there. Mm -hmm. It's always like that with a really nice tea is uh, everything is so bound together, integrated, and 
you know, it's not like little notes are popping up. It's the whole thing is its it's its own thing in the end. It is its own thing. Yeah, we choose a hard tea to mm -hmm. a taste. Oh. The quietest the tasting. <laughs> right. No, I'm just letting the um, aroma. I, one of the things I like to do and that you actually taught me was after the sip is to leave my mouth closed and just breathe over for a while. And it really uh, accentuates those more elusive aromas and those um, and also gives me a moment to kind of get in touch with the texture in my whole, not just my mouth, but in my whole throat. Right. That feeling you were talking about, that sort of slipperiness or that yes. that elegant, it's it's like my mouth, uh, we sometimes say that it leaves a beautiful, a wonderful coating on the mouth, but I feel like coating mm. is a little bit harsh, reminds me of maybe after you have a coffee with cream or something. Right. It's more like your mouth just feels better than it did before. Uh, your whole mouth and throat. It's really, uh, like you said, sensational. It's a feeling. It's a, uh, it, and it's, and I still have that sweetness even long after the sip. I have sweetness coming right. out of my cheeks and, yes, out, and out of my like, gums. It's a little bit visceral and maybe too graphic, but it really is watering my mouth. Mm, mm, absolutely, and um, mm. it's just uh, so comfy. The aroma, the flavor is penetrating. Mm. It's a gentle penetrating. Mm. Mm -hmm. Gentle, gently, gentle, powerful. Yes. Like it's not a booming, overwhelming, punch in the face kind of power, but it's a very, like, like I said, I feel good. Maybe overpowering, I might be like uh, reacting to it more, but I'm more, this is more working with me. Mm. Mm. You can see by the, I'm just remembering the uh, liquor color from before and the liquor color now, may, uh, maybe a shade, a couple shades dark, uh, like towards the amber red, reddening. Mm -hmm. We're a pretty dry location here, so the, the reddening is slower. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, there's definitely- So this tea is a, ever since, it's a 2003 production mm. and ever since 2003, it has been uh, North uh, storage mm. the whole time in Beijing mm -hmm. till 2017, 18? I forgot. Okay. Okay. Till quite that, recent to arrive in Canada. So it's a, uh, entirely North mm. storage. So you can definitely expect that to clarity in taste mm. in the Northern storage. Uh, not as muddy, not as uh, cloudy in terms of mm -hmm. the taste mm -hmm. and also the liquor you will actually see a, a slower change because of the dryness mm. in uh, the north, but in the taste, it also reflects its mm. quality as well. Right. Wow, I'm really, uh, I love the liquor aroma. I could just uh, smell this whole day. I wish they have like a perfume like this kind of. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, the liquor aroma is really, um, again, similar to the flavor. It's mm -hmm. it's gentle. It's not uh, obtrusive, but but like you said, you you want to just enjoy it over and over. Mm. Oh, I really like this infusion. Um, a little bit. Um, a little bit start to open up yes, more. Yes, sharper. A little bit sharper. Um, there's some brightness. I, there was no lack of brightness earlier, but now it's kind of brightening up. Like a feel like the sun peeking over the horizon in the morning. Mm. Just that now it's you know there. The lid has a little bit of hints of a medicinal smell. Mm. Now mm. it's a little bit like uh, ink. 
like right. the uh, the brush, the oh Chinese calligraphy. Oh my gosh, that is ink. scary! It just changed so much as it dried. Yeah, it went from that sort of Chinese medicine medicinal mm. to that ink pot. Uh, really quickly, I couldn't believe when you said that. I was like, "How could that be?" But it really that was shot. I'm gonna have another one. Oh, it's lighting up now. Mm. Thank you. Okay, I want this flavor, this aroma, to be the uh, a perfume rather more than mm. the more than yes. the 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 liquor aroma. This is more subtle and musky. Right? Yes, and it has that. Uh, like not quite a roasted, but a cooked. Like if you boil the sweet potato, it has that starchy. There's ah. certain heavier, weightier elements in the mm. aroma, with a gentle touch of floral, unnamed floral. Mm. It's not like a, right. It's Yunnan floral. <laughs> And I love the color and luster of the brood leaf too. It's right? kind of they've kind of become more uniform. They've got that gorgeous sort of lustrous, silky, matte red the brown. Leaf. Right? You see the leaf, the lust, the texture. Like you mm -hmm. said, it's a silky, literally like silk. This tea, the the material is of a really great mm. material. So this tea was a special order at that time from the uh, 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 the Shenzhen. How should I say that? I guess uh, it's the Yunnan exporting, importing the the head company, and the they have a sub company. I guess how do you call that in Shenzhen? And they special order this batch with okay. the Yi Wu ancient tree, so they have the top access to the top quality right. tree. And at that time, the concept of ancient trees and those gu shus are not. Overly exploited, so they're not over harvesting right, and stuff. Right. So those trees are still maintaining a really good quality. That's why it ages right. so well and has that depth of aroma, depth of flavor. Yeah, and the and the, just quality, look at the, the appearance just of the like, leaf. Yeah, I can't wait to actually pull those out when we're done and right? feel them. Mm. I'm gonna have another smell of this. Oh, this is so pleasant. I'm surprised uh, this small, this not weird, this interesting, like mesmerizing smokiness. Mesmerizing. That is a really good word for it. Like a uh, captivating smokiness. Yeah. Mm. And again, like I'm, af I'm afraid that over the video, it might uh, the the <laughs> word smoky might come across wrong. This is a really subtle like not a not a campfire style deal this is a deep <laughs> change almost, your mind about smokiness kind of a smokiness yes yes almost like <laughs> you know, i was going to say almost like a uh, i'm not sure i can describe it but like like a i don't know i don't know charcoal making like an inward a deep inward and slow release you know and it has that uh, beautiful, like a prune, the fruity sweetness mm. to balance it. Yes. So you don't feel like it's overly masculine, oh, wow. overly sharp, dry, like ashy or anything. There's mm. nothing like that because of the other elements to balance it. It's yes. just uh, like, a, I just, I, I don't know how to describe this. It's definitely a real um, taster. It's one you're going to want to sit down with and spend some time with. Take your time with. Mm. You definitely do not want to rush this. Let it set in the mouth. Breathe over the liquor. Let it let it go down slowly and enjoy the after. Just take a deep breath. It's mm. so relaxing. But it's also hard not to pick it up and finish the cup. Right. <laughs> Whew, so I am uh, I'm really enjoying Third this infusion. tea. Third infusion. I'm right. loving how this is uh, opening up, um, got it getting bright, eager to see how the third infusion comes out. But I have to admit I'm also thinking about the other half of the job and the other mm. reason for the tasting is updating the website. Right. So if you want to see how that turned out, um, the link is down below in the description. 
We're, if you think this tasty video is too quiet right <laughs> and you, too long too long you can fast forward to the result we um I'll, I'll update the notes with what i've gathered here and i'm as I, we mentioned right it's so much to assimilate and and uh i feel like it's a quite a bit of responsibility to try and get that across properly too but mm. As with our, all of our vintage teas that we that are great for aging, we do keep the tasting notes as we've updated them throughout time, so you can actually kind of get a feel for how the tea is uh, is maturing and developing. So uh, be sure to check that out. Mm -hmm. uh, and my... on the top, we have the simple like a uh, keywords mm, to give right. you an a uh, rough idea of this tea. Well, don't forget to click on the detailed description to yes, see yes. the full. Yeah, the full, the full um, paragraph style tasting notes. Those are where I put lots of time, so definitely take a look. <laughs> right. Oh. And the room goes quiet again. Just shocking. I don't know, we, I've noticed a few times we've been in a crowded room having fun with a bunch of friends and we'll drop a tea that will have the same effect on the whole room and suddenly you could hear a pin drop. This tea is one of those teas. <laughs> you can taste the um, like that brightening effect that I got on the second infusion. It's continuing this, to to use the sunrise metaphor again. The sun is continuing to rise here, um, and this is a gorgeous, gentle morning sun. This is not a a fierce burning sun. This is just sort of bathed in golden light feeling. It's just. Uh... Mm. So comforting and um, this, I would say this tea, the smell, the tasting profile is almost like a, a old di like old book of your, like your own mm. diary kind of thing. Like the, this <laughs> tasting elements is like old memory i don't know how to describe oh, wow. it's not a specific thing it's just something that is a pleasant in the past that somehow resonates and uh, you you forgot but love that thing that kind of reminds right. and you get a memory of it memory it, of it and it warms you up you're happy yes. to be reminded yes of it. that kind of a that is really you a, know like a that's a really complex <laughs> tasting note but uh but i totally under i get what you're saying like this the tea is so complex it it kind of evokes those emotions though it's mm. almost an emotional response just as much as it's a, a tasting sensation response the the sun metaphor i'm using is describing what's happening in my mouth i have yes. a little bit more attack at the front and attack is again a harsh word but it's it's not harsh it's just more it's more energetic initially now mm. than with the very first infusion and you felt I felt that crescendoing I feel that crescendoing as we sip yeah yeah the um that rich deep roasty smoky warming like that log cabin feeling uh flavor note is still deep in the tea with all of the um that dried plum dried smoked date is the is sort of the back end of the flavor i get that that lingers for a long time yeah mm. yeah my way of describe is very weird but i think i was just trying to say that mm. this tea has its own temperature uh, not water temperature but uh, mm. you know when we talk about it like a like a old book or a mm -hmm. log or stuff we think about the the smell we smell and stuff but mm -hmm. uh, you know the smell has temperature in it like the warmth that mm. comes with this tea is something that uh it's more than fitting it almost 
demonstrated in the tea liquor, the taste itself, but it's not an element of any other food or stuff that I can mm. think of. Yeah, at the end of the day, it is its own unique being, its own unique flavor. I really love that dried date. Right. Flavor note though, that is really thick. And the mouthfeel is so thick. And its sweetness doesn't make this tea sweet that I really like. The sweetness mm. seems to be like a little bit uh, haunted. Haunting like... Um, like... Um, it's there, but you cannot uh, like pin right. it down to a specific kind right. of sweetness, but it helps balancing the things out. And I feel like in this infusion, it starts to become a little bit subdued. Mm, I agree. Like yeah. not... It's pulling as... back compared to the first infusion. It's mm. Maybe not pulling back, but, yes. but sinking in. Yes, it mm. almost feels like the dry fruit get rid of that uh, sweetness you would have. It has that uh, dry fruit, almost the tartness show more than, mm. the, yes. than the sweetness of the dry fruit. Mm. Yeah, I think the bottom line is, is you're gonna have to try it. Yeah, I really like, feel like a... I would love to hear, to hear from you I guys. I feel bad for you though. It's hard to write. It's, I don't know how you gotta is, write yeah, this. I'm gonna, just spend some time with it and try and get this out in words. Yeah. And just uh, watching how it drops mm. that uh, thickness, the soupy of the liquor. This is the time. Mm. Yeah, it's opened uh, up. It's yeah. really opened up. It's really giving right now. Yeah, and we often say that, you know, the true demonstration of age is the thickness in the liquor. Mm. People often like uh, gravitate towards a specific tasting element and stuff. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we or know- Or a liquor color. Where the liquor color mm. or stuff, those are, um, how mm. should I say, easy to fake mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Like uh, those elements are indeed an element that right. mm. exists in HD, but uh, it's, it's not only exist in HD. That's right. Yeah. Whereas that thickness, that, that thickness from age, mm -hmm. mm, can't, you can't play with that. You can't fabricate that. Yeah, it's related. I think it's related to how the lipids in the tea transforms uh. and stuff. This new bright note is really pleasant in the hot liquor right after the infusion it's uh, more pronounced than after a few moments it's going to cool and more transform into that mm. um that ethereal sweetness that you mentioned that sort of oh. but i've gotten a really bright and that tartness is a little bit more bright tart pop there's a pop at the beginning of the of the sip mm. but i i will kind of want to emphasize that this is a very steady tea mm. For yes. infusion, in terms of how we yes. talked about how the changes are really, really nuanced, minor nuanced things. And subtle, yes. Yeah, that's why it's so hard for us. It was really consistent and a really proper level. Right. Yes, right? you don't see a big slope and then a, I, yeah. I don't expect this is going to dive off quickly at all. This right? is going to be a... And the first infusion uh, was uh, just start to open up, but mm -hmm. there's no lack of a flavor. Mm -hmm. It's rich. As, Even the thickness yeah. was readily apparent on yes. the first infusion. Right, second infusion and the later infusion, I start to let it sit a little bit longer. It's a bigger teapot and we feel the intensity rise a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's not ripping the face off. It's not, not like a all. tea that, you know, good teas are like that. You don't have to be, Ex extremely, like a, precise. extremely precise right. it's not like 10 seconds it's gonna be delicious become not drinkable or mm. anything it's yeah, a very like a tolerant tea mm -hmm. 
and nothing really new has jumped into the mix or mm -hmm. nor is anything suddenly absent from the mix in that case it's also steady like the profile like you said it intensifies mm. but it didn't no holes have developed and the consistency the the texture the liquor mouthfeel consistency is still in the mm. in the liquor mm. and i feel like this tea is like ideal if you have a you know a friend a bunch of really into tea like a tea friend gathering mm. and you can drink this tea for the whole mm. afternoon and share yes. those different things mm -hmm. and uh, yeah yeah you could really get into this tea and spend some time with it with with a with, absolutely you know, with some friends that's a great idea on the other hand like we noticed earlier it's so such a calm and quieting tea you could also just get a little pot and have some me treat time. Yourself. Have a total treat yourself <laughs> time. It's this one goes both ways. Mm. Mm. After the swallow, I have that minor drying and then that watery return of those those gentle those gentle sweet notes those date I plum. love with you mm. yeah it's kind of like uh, because this is a slight, uh, a little bit more stronger brew than mm -hmm. the previous one so i have a more astringency mm -hmm. when i finish but it just it's really like a fat. It doesn't linger so my mouth. Mm -hmm, that's For me, right. it's the it's the, when I finish everything, then I have a little uh, roughness, a little slight roughness mm -hmm. on my tongue, and quickly I have all those saliva, mm -hmm. saliva, kind of right. a really mouth yeah, watering it waters and, up and, the, and the aromas and sweetness comes back. It's mm -hmm. really, and that's where I like to just ideally not talk, keep my mouth closed and breathe mm. over that whole experience. Is really it's just a pleasant, the sensation mm. is pleasant, mm. the aroma is pleasant, the flavor lingering in the mouth is pleasant. Mm. Mm. We have to decide how many infusions we want to do on camera, otherwise this could yeah, be like yeah, an we'll afternoon, we'll like two three, hour tasting. A three hour video or something. Right. <laughs> All right, infusion five of this amazing tea. Still getting that aroma over here. That was the first time I got hit while you're infusing. Right. That little hint. I got of, the hit. The, the first infusion I was remember, when I, yeah. as soon as water hits it, I felt that. I got a little hint of that, that date. It's interesting. It's a, date. It, it has it, like uh, I smell that right away, but it wasn't like a, a tact kind mm, of feeling. Mm. It's just so you smell. You know that's the smell, but it's not like booming. Mm. It's just there, like lingering, uh, gently rising up, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Wow, the liquor color is super consistent. That um, sort of deep gold orange i just really enjoy yeah. loving that it lost the drip those drips huh those drips are really like if you you uh never uh notice the, the the sound difference with different teas and different liquors but the last drip really emphasize on the uh the, the elasticity like yeah the elasticity the, of the liquor yeah that's mm. kind of a soupy thick texture or, really Display yeah. like think yeah. about the viscosity we could vis say yeah mm. think about like a, a clear water vis-a-vis -vis, uh, bone soup the mm. you know twelve hours stewed with all kind of goodies right. in it a thick mm -hmm. thick bone soup kind of texture incredible like, consistent. Yeah, it's really consistent. That just wrap in a warm blanket aroma. Oof, fly off. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. 
I made the mistake of sipping too early. I couldn't grab the pot for the no, leaf okay. aroma. So now I'm gonna go in for a. I couldn't hold myself back from tasting it. My, in my cup, I smell more of that uh, light floral than in the uh, serving pot. Mm. And the aroma of the, of the brewed leaf is so, it's connected to the aroma of the liquor, but it's so different as well. Mm. I can't, I guess it's that kind of muskiness we talked about earlier. Muskiness. Mm. Just a little bit more, Mm. It's it's holding more in or something. Am I wrong? I feel a little bit creaminess. <laughs> At the worst, you're tea drunk, okay? Right, tea drunk, tea drunk. And it's not. It's after I sip the tea, I uh, I breathe through my nose only. Mm. This is a really like a slow tea. Mm. Uh, slow in terms of it takes time to uh, taste. Like uh, right. like I can, t I need a break in between every sip mm -hmm. because yes. there's so much happening after mm -hmm. I swallow it. It's still like I'm still trying to understand this tea when I'm, yes. you know, without the liquor in my mouth. Yes, in time, from the time you sip the tea mm. until when sort of the tasting experience is done, it's long after the sip. Mm. Um, there's a moment when it's on your tongue and you breathe over it, then you swallow. But even after that, there's still a lot of time you're going to want to give this tea, right? Because it just, yeah, yeah. It, it fills your whole, well, it, 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 flavor-wise, it fills your whole mouth and nose and throat. And it, it really does go beyond that too. You want to give it time to, to just enjoy the flavors and enjoy the experience. Yeah, it's a tea. Mm. It gives me goosebumps. Mm. It's yeah. I think that that's why we drink pu'er with uh, always a big cup. If you're buying cups and stuff, mm -hmm. those sometimes they were like, oh, those tasting cups are big. Usually those are pu'er tasting cups. When you drink pu'er, you need to not chug it, kind of literally chug it. Just mm. compared to like a oolong little mini cup and sip sip you need mm. a volume to really get to the sensation because it's those ancient trees it's mm. those forests they have so much energy or qi that is in the material itself and it's so very minimum process so mm. it preserve a lot of that you are tasting the right almost like a connecting with that forest yes, kind of feeling yes it really takes you into the jungle right, right? you're really there and you really need that moment of having time feeling it mm. tasting it mm. with a big sip the consistency is really stunning right it's really um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it can go for a long time. Like this is the yes. fifth infusion. I don't feel like it's dropping anywhere. Like in terms of the full chart of the tasting mm -hmm. profile, those elements are changing in terms of like a little bit a different role, mm -hmm. playing like almost like a different position in the stage, but it's not missing any of the roles. Oh no. Right? So, um, wow. Well, in terms of the time, we, yeah, we this definitely one's gonna last forever. we're not going to finish this tea on camera. We can't. Right. So um, I think we would just call the fifth infusion, the last infusion. Right. And um, if you're curious about the full right. description. So that comes I back think. to my big job now right. is to once we finish this tea up, I'm going to try and assimilate all of this. Check out the website. I'm going to mm. have up top, as we mentioned, there'll be our short version of the tasting notes, but be sure to check out the description down below too. That's going to have the full experience there um, and all the sort of nuanced stuff that I can 
uh, craft up and write up so that to, to share that with you. But ideally, right. probably the best thing to do is try this tea. It's such mm. a great experience. Because I really feel like it's so hard I to describe. I don't know if I can do it justice. Yeah. Yeah. So the absolutely just feels like the words are so weak and limited, uh, right? Limited in mm. terms of how this tea is, and uh, maybe you guys can help us out. Right. And uh, if you try this tea. You know, share with us what's your tasting notes and what's your feeling. So, mm. you know, it's yeah, not I would only love that. <laughs> right for us to learn how different people are describing yes. the same thing differently, and also help other fellow right. tea drinkers to have a closer, a little multi-angle look yeah, at this. Yeah, that's right. A closer, another person's approximation, give them another right way to view it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well. That's about it for today's uh, tasting. I hope you yeah. enjoyed the video. Please give us a thumbs up if you liked it. That's right. And if you want to contact us with any questions or whatever, you can reach us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, of course, here on YouTube, and even on our website, we've got a little chat box and a way to email us there. So don't hesitate if you have any questions or comments. Mm -hmm. And I guess until next time, guys, we're going to finish this tea up. And yeah. uh, until next time, keep, keep steeping. steeping. Oh my god, that was so hard to describe. <laughs> I really love your little thing about the uh, memory. That was brilliant. I couldn't believe well, when I, I could have figured I, out. I feel like this tea gave me a social bubble, which is like <coughs> sucked me out of my space. I'm just in this oh. tea like so keen. Yeah, and you really want to just not talk. I didn't right? want to open my mouth. I just want to breathe and breathe over yes, it. Yes, yes. It's crazy.